Good morning to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion. It is now August 15th, 2019. Happy Thursday to you. This is going to be a fairly short discussion, but a discussion that will sort of define or beginning to define the moment when we saw that things were getting ready to turn in the Atlantic Basin. And I'll um, expand upon what I mean by that as I go through this. First, of course, nothing going on in the Atlantic Basin right now. Uh, widespread sinking motion throughout this area, dry air. It's not so much the dust, it's the dry air, the stable air. I talked about this yesterday. And there is also some westerly shear uh, cutting across this region, generally speaking, and that's not favorable. But all of these things are to be expected even in a season that is also expected to be busy. Because remember, we still have plenty of time on the clock. September and October, that 60-day time frame, a lot can happen. And I'm starting to see the signs on uh, message boards like Storm 2K and on Twitter and elsewhere that things are going to change. Not necessarily really soon because it's still a slow process, but the models are starting to show. They're, they're kind of playing catch-up. We've lost the El Nino. That influence, what little there was, is dying out, and we're starting to flip the pattern, and we're seeing the signs of that on uh, sites here like Storm 2K and the Talking Tropics Forum and on Twitter as well. Okay, so Storm Chaser here, JS, uh, tweeted at me today, uh, this morning, that the JMA, which is the Japanese, <coughs> excuse me, the Japanese Meteorological Agency, I think that's what it stands for, very impressive with upward motion in the Atlantic the next four weeks. Look out for hurricanes, you know, look out hurricanes on the way. So this is the upward motion chart. And, you know, you can see this is the uh, period. Um, this is initialized on the 14th, and this is the forecast days 3 through 9. You start to, it's hard to see what's what. There's your sinking motion. This is not favorable. That's more in the western Pacific. Here is the Atlantic Basin with much more favorable overall conditions starting to set up. Also, the same was being talked about. Uh, Storm Chaser JS here uh, tweeting at uh, our good friend Yakov here from over in Jerusalem. Uh, this guy here is a meteorologist over there and um, focuses on commodities and weather risk. And obviously, tropical cyclones are a weather risk. And he is talking about it as well. And also noting that the JMA monthly forecast is also concerning, suggesting a burst, uh, let's use the highlighter here, in Atlantic tropical activity time near the peak season and again in October. And then the 500 millibar pattern is also supporting an increased U.S. landfall risk for September-October, similar to Atlantic sea surface temperature analogs that he posted, and not so different from the last few years pattern. It's like a rinse and repeat type pattern. And this is what I'm talking about. These are people that know what they are looking at. They know how to interpret these maps, the guidance, etc. And remember, this is just guidance. Computer models are nothing more than a simulation based on mathematics and physics uh, of the Earth's atmosphere, among other things. And so just like you can have a... Uh, a movie that creates computer-generated imagery, either the entire movie, like Toy Story, as an example, um, or you add CGI to real-world uh, stuff, like the Star Wars, uh, you know, the latest Star Wars movies, not so much the first three <laughs> from the 70s and on, but you know what I'm saying, or Avengers, okay, the end game, the biggest movie of all time. Those are all... Uh, computer models, simulations of real-world phenomenon, you know, characters, people, and what have you, and you can do the same with weather. But the difference here in CGI in a movie and weather modeling is the weather modeling is just guidance. It doesn't mean it has to happen. It is not, to use 
the phrase here, the end game, okay? It doesn't mean that what's tweeted here is what is going to happen, necessarily. Unlike CGI in a movie that is a computer model of a, of a superhero character or an explosion or whatever the case may be, that is the end result. That is a hard um, visual that you can see, and it is the finished product. It's 100% certain to happen. And I know I'm getting off on a tangent here, but I want you to understand that the basics of this, just because it's forecast, doesn't mean that it has to happen. In other words, the, the, the last way to put it, this does not guarantee that there will be hurricanes. So don't mistake that, but it is a pretty compelling argument that there should be hurricanes because it resembles the last few years, 16, 17, and 18, uh, with the patterns that we saw. And it was a very similar type setup, you know, about a year ago uh, from Ben Knoll. And speaking of Ben, there you go. Over the next several weeks, the Atlantic Basin will likely become less hostile towards tropical development. And his animation here, which is super duper fantastic, you can see the uh, brown, kind of brownish, uh, what do you call it, rusty looking color, uh, copper, whatever, is um, the sinking motion. And the green is the upward motion that's more favorable. And it turns to more favorable over in the Atlantic less favorable here uh, over the Western Pacific. And this is important because it does coincide with the timing as I stop the animation here, this big check mark. Because when is this? The week of September 9th through the 14th, four weeks out. And that is also the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season traditionally. Traditionally. I think that we're shifting that peak, but that's a story for another day. We'll see. We need probably 10 more years for that semi-theory to be valid. We'll talk about that another time. So here you go from Ben Knoll, another um, intriguing sort of thought you know, to chew on for the next few days. And then finally, to round it all out, Joe Bastardi uh, at Weatherbell. And he talked about it on uh, his video that he does. He calls it the Atmospheric Avenger. And um, he discusses as to why the threat of impact uh, from tropical cyclones is coming to the pattern. And he too mentions the JMA 500 millibar pattern in the next 30 days looks like a mean, like the average, that's what he means here, of the last eight landfalling storms. And the JMA velocity potential here is now shifting into the Atlantic Basin. So these are all independent, all right? I guarantee you that between Yakov and Ben and Joe, and then over here, uh, even with the first tweet, that Storm Chaser JS, okay, they're not all calling each other up. What do you got? What's the JMA show? You know, they're all looking at this stuff independently, and they're coming to their own conclusions and like doctors, especially at a teaching hospital, that can compare notes, maybe they do look at what each other are saying. I don't know that. I certainly do. I talk about that very openly. I like to look at what everybody is saying from forums like Storm2K and then across Twitter and then base my um, outlook and my plans as I intercept hurricanes here and, and study them for a living on what all these people are saying. And so what do we call that? We call it a consensus. And the overwhelming majority of the data points to a consensus from just these four sources here that I pointed out, basically all citing uh, the JMA outlook that came out today. I guess it must have come out this morning or something, um, that we're heading into a more active period. So there you go. There's nothing more to really discuss because... It's just an, a wait-and-see game now. I think from here on out, we'll certainly watch the operational models, the ensemble prediction system of all the models. Uh, well, not all of them. That could take all day. Every time I do an update, it would be six hours long. But certainly focusing on the EPS of the um, European model, which is the ensemble prediction system, the GFS and its GEFS ensemble forecast system, and see what happens. It doesn't mean that tomorrow we're going to start seeing hurricanes. It just means that as we get into September, 
the traditional ramping up should be influenced even more so by this favorable pattern that's going to be shifting into the Atlantic Basin, or so it would appear. All right, there you go. That is it. I'll be back with more tomorrow. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. As always, thanks for tuning in from your device of choice. I do appreciate it, and I'll be back with more for you tomorrow afternoon.